to take a moment and say thank you to all of my podcast listeners. We're all busy these days. We all have jobs and families and things like that. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to listen to my podcasts. I'm going to change things up a little bit instead of podcasting uh, specifically on Monday and Friday. I think what I'd like to do is maybe make it a little more flexible for me. Uh, so for it fits my schedule a little bit better and then instead of a specific day I'll just indicate the episode number and then at, that way I can podcast any day of the week I want. I plan on continuing to try and do one to two a week as time permits. Um, who knows, maybe down the road I'll be able to do more than two a week. For now I would like to focus on a couple things. Uh, one being how to manage stress. It's kind of a combination of things actually. Managing stress, how to stay in control when you're in an emergency situation or under pressure, when life uh, throws things at you. That's kind of the focus of this podcast. So what I'd like to do is kind of expand on that a little bit and for my listeners and try and uh, use some of my own life experiences, but more importantly, make suggestions based on not just my, not just the, the experiences that are specific to me, but things that could actually happen to any of us out there. So let me expand on that a little bit. So for example, and it doesn't matter whether you're two parents or a single parent, or if you're just a, a single person, whether you're young or old, doesn't matter. I'm sure you've all had situations where you've had something happen to you, either a flat tire in your car, Maybe the dishwasher broke down, washer dryer, kid got sick, need to go to the pharmacy. Sometimes when you're in a situation where something uh, unexpected happens and one of two basic things is going to happen, you're either going to panic or you're going to stay cool and you're going to think, okay, so what's the first step? Great, what's the second step? What's the third step? Am I by myself? Am I with someone else? Here's an example of what something that happened to me. I was a uh, single parent raising my kids. One day we were going back home from watching a movie at the movie theater on a Saturday. And I was driving down the road. It was just a little two-lane road, not a, not a major highway. And there was a bee in the car, and my daughter absolutely freaked out. And she screamed at the top of her lungs, which caused me to react instinctively. And for some reason, I don't know what made me think to turn to the right a little bit because I was already in the right lane. So the only thing next to me was the, the concrete abutment that separates the road and the grass. So because of the instinctive reaction and because she startled me, I rolled the tire up over the, um, the concrete, which blew the tire. Now... I was a little upset with her that she panicked, but I was more concerned about how quickly can I just get this taken care of so we can just go home. I'm not the type of person who panics. I don't. I just, I reacted to it because it startled me. But under a situation where, okay, I've got a flat tire, we're out on the road, we're a couple of miles from home, I'm not going to panic. All I did was call AAA. I had somebody come get the you know, help with the flat tire, we got the car fixed, eventually we go home, I cook dinner, wahoo, everybody's happy. I've been in a situation even that's in on a, on a personal level. So if you've ever been in a situation where you're doing something fun and something unexpected happens that almost spoils the fun, have you ever had that happen? Maybe you were going to a sporting event. Maybe you're on your way to a football game or a baseball game. Maybe you're on your way to your kid's game and you got a flat tire. Maybe you were uh, driving on, the, on a highway on the way to a trip. Maybe it was a weekend getaway. Something happens. It could be anything. could be maybe you left your uh, debit card at home. could be maybe there's an issue with the car. There was a trip that I took with uh, my wife many years ago, and we were hiking in the mountains. And it was in um, a place called the Enchantments. And the Enchantments is located in the Alpine Lakes Wilderness in Washington State. And the Alpine Lakes Wilderness is uh, uh, thousands of square miles, <clears throat> give me, of, of wilderness and lakes and countless trails. Well, we're up in the mountains and we're on our way down, right? 
and she ends up uh, hurting her foot and she gets to a point where she can't walk and we both have full size packs that we have to carry. Now these packs weigh anywhere from 40 to 50 to 55 pounds. Well, it turns out that we I was concerned that she wasn't going to make it back to the car. We still had a ways to go yet. Fortunately, along the way, on the way down, though we were moving rather slowly, some um, young guys who were doing some rock climbing way up there on the, near Kolchuk uh, Peak, up at, at seven, eight, nine thousand feet earlier in the day, were on their way back down to their cars. And they were passing by us, and we were kind of resting, talk, talking, trying to figure out how we could get the uh, ourselves and the two packs down the car. Well, I had considered, you know, I, I would carry one, she'd stay there, I'd come back, put her pack on me, and then we would just walk down, and I, I would walk with her. What I was concerned about the time, because there was a storm rolling in, and there wasn't a whole lot of daylight left. So here come these young guys, three three uh, young strapping guys, they're in great shape, and um, they asked us how things going, and we kind of explained to them what was going on, and um, you know, neither one of us were, were, were panicking, I mean, I had no reason to panic, we'd... We were out in the mountains. We were very experienced hikers, very experienced backpackers. We knew the mountains. We knew we know the mountain weather. We had everything you could possibly need. Uh, someone knew where we were. Was we we never we never go on a trip where we don't at least tell someone where we're going. That that's a rookie mistake. And we had you know we had food. We had water. We had energy bars. We had all kinds of stuff. We had heads uh, headlamps. We had trekking poles, backpacks, nice boots to protect our feet. We, we were prepared. We knew what we were doing. It's just that she was in a situation where it was really hard for her to walk. And I didn't want her to have to risk carrying the pack all the way down. So we were telling the guys, that, look, guys, we're, she's, she's her here. I don't think she's going to make it. Is there any way at all you can help out? So we got to the point where, uh, and it didn't take long. It took maybe all of two minutes and this one guy said oh here i can i can help now he now picture this he's wearing his pack he already has his pack on right he has his own backpack on so he's, he's got a full-size pack probably weighs 40 45 pounds give or take and he's got uh he's got an ice axe hanging on and he's got um he's got ropes because they were doing rock climbing and while he's still wearing his he picks up her backpack puts it, his arms through the, the shoulder straps, but straps it onto the front side of his body. So now he has her pack on his, the front side of him. He's wearing his pack on his back side. And he carries both packs all the way down to the car. Now the cars are only maybe another mile away, maybe a mile and a half, two at the most. Not very far. And you could even look down off the trail and see the parking lot down below. We were just up on the trail, up on the mountain. And I couldn't believe that this guy was doing this. It didn't surprise me. He was young and he was in great shape. So I figured, well, hey, good for you, man. I wish I could do that. Um, I couldn't do it. So I, well, what I did was I focused on helping her while I'm wearing my pack. And they went ahead, went ahead of us. They got back down to the cars, waited for us. It got dark before we even got to the cars. They They got into their car, turned their headlights on to guide us so we could get back to the parking lot. The bottom line here, of course, is that even though there, we were fortunate enough to run into trail angels who were able to help us, the point is neither one of us panicked. We had no reason to. We don't, you don't panic when you're on the mountains. When you're on the mountains, it, hey, weather rolls in. If you're experienced, you don't panic. So that's just one example, right? I've been in situations where I've had flat tires. I've had, you know, the kids have been sick. And, you know, one the, here's one thing I know a lot of you can relate to. Have you ever noticed your kids never get sick on a weekday? Have you ever noticed that? They always get sick on weekends and holidays. And back in the day when I was raising my kids, there was, this was long before 24-hour pharmacies. There was no such thing as 24-hour. You had to go and get it during working hours or during the day on a weekend. There was no such thing. Today, you can go to one any time of day. But isn't that true, though? It, they, it, it never fails. They always get sick in the most inconvenient time. Cars break down at the most inconvenient time. Stuff fails. Stuff happens. Life happens when it wants to on its own schedule, not ours. 
So how is how do you do that, right? So how do you take a situation? You can even take a situation where you're at work, right? And you're working, you're on, you're on the job. Whatever it is that you're doing, let's say you're, let's say you're hired to do something very specific all day long. Let's say you work in a, I don't know, you work in accounting, or you work in programming, or you work in, I don't know, the front office. It could be anything. Whatever your job is. And you already know you have a ton of stuff you have to get done every day. You already know your job. You do it every day. But then your boss comes to you and says, you know what, we've got this uh, extra project here on the side. I need help with it. So-and-so is out sick. Can you help me do that? So now they've just added something to your plate. Well, you might stress a little bit. Most of us would. But you have to keep your composure. And here's, here's another thing, too. And it doesn't matter whether it's work or you're in the mountains, or you have a problem with the car. Maintain your composure, because the first thing that should be happening in your mind is not, oh my God, what am I gonna do? The first thing in your mind should be, okay, so what needs to be done first? What's one? Okay, let's fix that. Okay, good, cool, that's done. What's step two? Okay, that's done, what's step three? You need to prioritize Take the big picture, which can at times seem overwhelming. I know this from personal experience. Trust me. It can seem overwhelming. Take the big picture and divide it up into pie slices in your mind. Like, okay, I've got um, six things I need to do. And they all have different levels of priority or severity. I'll use the word severity, right? Severity level one needs to be done right away. That would be priority number one. Okay, so what's priority? So picture this in your head. Okay, so the first pie slice, the biggest one, that's priority number one. So you're going to go, okay, I'm going to do this first, this second, this third, but I'm not going to panic. I'm going to manage it. I'm not going to let it manage me. I'm going to manage it. So the way you do that is you internalize this. You think in your mind there, but because here's the thing. If here, think of it this way: if you're in your car, right? And you get a flat. I'm not talking about a blowout. Sometimes those things are pretty dangerous. I'm talking about it just goes flat. Your your car's still rolling down the hill. It's slowing down. You think, oh, man, here we go. Oh, great. I'm tired. I hate this. Just pull over. Come to a stop. If you have AAA and you want to use it, great. If you're, uh, if you're feeling um, DIY, if you feel a DIY, DIY moment and you want to do it yourself, great. Get your jack out. Make sure you're on a safe place on the side of the road. Go for it. If you have a spare, you want to do that. Okay, cool. Great. But you don't panic. So here's another way to look at it, right? So I'm, I'm on the side of the road. I'm fixing my flat. I'm in control, right? I didn't let this flat take control of me. I'm in control. I pulled over the side of the road. I'm safe. That's the number one thing. Anybody who's with me is safe. Maybe they're staring at their smartphones texting while I'm working on the tire. Okay. Everybody's happy. Everybody's cool. It's the same thing with anything you do in life. What you don't want to do is allow the situation to control you. You stay in control of the situation. And the more of those situations you find yourself in, the more of those moments that you experience in life, the more experience you gain at managing it. And the more experience you gain, the more confidence you gain. And the more experience and confidence you gain, the easier it is for you to stay calm. You ever wonder why it is that um, police officers, firefighters, and, um, well, I don't know, what's another good one? Let's see. Um, Police officers, firefighters, uh, I don't know, first responders, I don't know, somebody who deals with uh, immediate in-your-face, boom, here it is. You got to do something. People that deal with it, you ever wonder wonder why it is, how it is they stay uh, calm? You ever wondered about that? Have you ever watched a firefighter? I was a volunteer firefighter when I was young. I served on the uh, Middletown Fire Department in uh, Louisville, Kentucky in my 20s. And uh, I went through all the training, had all the training, learned all kinds of things about fire science I never knew anything about. Learned about the fire triangle. I didn't know anything about that. And I learned how to work with a Scott pack. I learned how to, you know, how to do everything you can imagine I learned. The tools, the ladders, learned how to work with the hoses, learn what an attack line is, how to go in into a room with other people with me, of course, who are more experienced, and how to attack the fire with the fire, with the attack line. The attack line is typically 100, 150 gallons a minute attack, attack line. 
Well, you ever wonder how it is those people, how is it they stay cool? Like, you ever notice that? You ever watch them? They don't panic, do they? They're just like, okay, I put my gear on. Okay, I got my hose. I'm going in there. Cool. Put the fire out. Right on. When I'm done, I'll, you know, I'll stick around and do my fireman thing and make sure there's no nothing crawling through the walls that's going to ignite again. And when we're all done, we'll go back to the station, wash down the truck, and we'll eat dinner. Well, the reason why they're like that partly is because of their training, obviously, because they have to be trained on how to handle this, those situations. But it's partly the person that they are. You can actually train your mind to react and be in, I should say, let me correct that. You can train yourself to be proactive instead of reactive, okay? What you don't want to do is be reactive. Now, there's times when you have to be reactive, okay? We all know that, right? Oh, I have a flat tire. Okay, cool. I need to pull over the side of the road. Pulling over the side of the road safely is reacting. Being proactive is staying calm and either being safe, changing yourself, or calling AAA. That's being pro Thinking in your mind, okay, I'm going to call AAA. I'm going to call a tow truck. That's being proactive. That's the proactive part of that, right? If you... Um, if you have a kitchen fire, maybe you have, you're cooking something in a frying pan and the frying pan catches fire, you don't panic and call 911. You grab some baking soda and toss it in there, turn the heating element off, move the pan away from the element that was hot, and you make sure the fire goes out. But you don't panic, right? Because that, that's not going to do anybody any good. You learn how to do these things as life uh, puts you into these situations and you find yourself going through these little things over and over and over and over and over again. These the little things that happen to you, right, actually prep you for the bigger things that happen in life. Right? So for, so in other words, if you're in a situation where let's say you're in a I don't know, let's say you're in a shopping somewhere in a department store, or grocery store, and you hear a loud noise like someone dropped something but it's really loud, it might startle you a little bit, but are you going to panic? No. So you can actually train yourself to remain calm, to think clearly, and think to yourself, okay, what's step one? What's step two? Hey, I got this. I got this, man. This is no big deal. I'll go fix this. I'll fix this. I'll do this over here. Everything's fine. And as you go through life, you will begin, you will be better and better at doing it. You'll get better and better at doing that, guys. Trust me. It will happen, and you will find yourself becoming more calm and more proactive in, uh, with the things you do in life. Because let's face it, you know what? Life is going to throw all kinds of things at us, right? It always does. Life is our biggest challenger. It always will be. It's always going to kick you in the six and knock you down. What you do is you get up again, you dust yourself off, and you think, okay, you know what? Whatever, dude. Bring it on. Whatever. I'm going to move on and get on with my day. And then when it, when it happens again, you get yourself you get back up again and dust yourself off and move on. And it happens again and again and again. Okay, fine, whatever. You're, you know, eventually your attitude is not a problem, dude. Bring it. Not a problem. So the, the point of this, of course, the point of this podcast is for, for my quote-unquote episode seven is that... Uh, you can actually control your thought process so that you're proactive, not reactive in a bad way, so that you remain calm in an emergency situation and you move on. Here's another example, and I'm only using I'm using my life examples here because I know a lot of people can relate to this, at least in some small way, maybe not exactly the same way. Many years ago I was working on a graveyard shift as a clerk in a gas station. And I had this guy come in about 2, 2.30 in the morning um, and uh, with his daughters. And he grabbed some stuff, came up to the counter, threatened me, and then pulled out a gun with his daughter standing right next to him. Well, I didn't panic. Um, he and I started, you know, talking a little bit there at the counter. Eventually, long story short, I did walk around the counter to his side of the counter, and I chatted with him for about five minutes or so. He was telling me they'd lost his job and he was angry, blah, 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 blah. And all I did was talk with him. And I talked with him in a normal tone of voice. I didn't, I wasn't judgmental. I wasn't anything. I just talked to him, okay, oh man, I'm really sorry you lost your job. I know how that feels. That sucks. 
you know, just like you're talking to your neighbor who lost their job. And so I, I kind of calmed him down. I'm getting to the point where he, he was no longer in panic mode where he wanted to uh, continue threatening anyone in the situation. My biggest worry the entire time was his daughter. I thought, what kind of an idiot would commit a crime with their daughter or their kid? Who would do that? Are you insane? Eventually, long story short, the guy did. He ended up going to court. I ended up going to court. I had to testify, and he ended up serving time and all that. I remained calm. I'm, I'm a veteran of the military. I know how to identify a weapon. I knew that I was not necessarily in any danger. My big, like I said, my best concern was not my own safety. It was the child. My, my safety was not my concern. I thought, hey, he's an adult. I'm an adult. I'm in my 40s, you know, early 50s, whatever. I've already lived half a century. This kid was probably maybe 8 to 10 years old maybe 12 at the most, and I'm thinking, hey, this isn't about me. It's not about him. We got to get, we got to contain this here, right? So that's an example. It's a rather rough example, but it's an example of when life presents a situation to you, the one thing you don't want to do is panic, especially when you're dealing with someone like that who is stressed out, who is angry, because all, all you're going to do is fan the flames, Right? That's all you're going to do. You're just going to throw gas on fire. You don't want to do that. You want to stay calm because they're going to feed off of your fear. They're going to feed off of it. So don't throw gas on the fire. Just stay calm. And the same thing can be said about many little things in life. Maybe it's a disagreement at home. Maybe it's a disagreement with a coworker. Don't fan the flames. Don't throw gas on the fire. Hey, look, man, I, that probably didn't come out right. I'm sorry. Here, let me explain to you what I really meant. Just stay calm. Okay, folks. Thanks for listening to podcast number seven. I hope you found this helpful. As mentioned, as I mentioned earlier on in the podcast, I'm going to kind of sort of change how I do things, so it's not going to be specific to any certain day. I will continue doing the podcasts. If any of you would like to contact me on uh, SoundCloud, you can do that. SoundCloud.com. You can also contact me on my website, which is EricGrantOwens.com. You can contact me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Eric Grant Owens or on Instagram or Twitter. Thanks so much for listening to my podcast. Be safe out there. Have a great day. Also remember to bookmark my podcast on SoundCloud. You can reach me on my social media websites on Twitter at author, author Owens, also on Instagram at Eric Owens Author, or on Facebook at Eric Grant Owens. Also reach me on my website at ericgrantowens.com. Make sure to sign up for my newsletter so that you can keep up to date with my book publishing projects. Thanks for listening. <music>